Lyman Spitzer was an inspiration, not just as a, as a scientist, but in addition to that, he was really um, a remarkable human being. He was a visionary, uh, he was a scientific leader, he was the one that in the 40s, 1940s, before anybody could ever imagine putting a telescope in space, he immediately started thinking and said, well, there are rockets, we can go above the Earth's atmosphere. Why don't we build some mission, put a telescope up above the Earth's atmosphere? So he, he wrote this uh, paper for the RAND Corporation. It was an, an unusual proposition that he was making. If you can get away from the atmosphere, whether, which makes the stars twinkle, which is very pretty and more romantic and all that, if you could get above that and get a telescope up there, you could learn a good deal. People thought he was crazy. It just sounded like science fiction. He did some early work on uh, uh, balloon measurements to show how great was the improvement if you got to greater heights. And as a result of that, uh, Lyman became the focal point for putting telescopes in space. Anybody that studies astronomy and astrophysics has to think of Lyman as a great uh, pioneer, but also one who laid the foundations, uh, solid foundations for, for future work. He made epical contributions in plasma physics, in stellar dynamics, in space physics, in the interstellar medium, and in how stars form. I think it's fair to say that if any one person um, created the field of thought of interstellar astrophysics, it was Lyman Spitzer. He was certainly among the very first people to be applying laws of physics to thinking about interstellar dust and recognizing it as something which was not just the, the annoying obscuration which bothers optical astronomers who'd be quite happy if there simply uh, were no interstellar dust, but rather he recognized that it was something which was a, a crucial constituent of the interstellar medium. The last of the great observatories is up and running now. It fits what Lyman Spitzer's vision was perfectly well. And that's why I'm so sorry he's not here to see his dream come true. His outlet was rock climbing. He was a, a very good climber. Uh, took probably a few more risks than uh, I would have been willing to take. When he was chair of the department and was you know, quite senior at the university, uh, he decided it would be nice to climb the tower of the graduate college. He thought, well, the worst thing they could do is take away his chairmanship of the department, which he thought was perfectly okay. So he completed the climbs and was reprimanded and uh, I guess went home. The students just adored him. He had this aura and presence when he walked in a room, you knew you were in the presence of a great man, but he did not want to take any of the credit away from the young people that were working with him. His office was in the house, at the foot of the stairs. The kids would want to come in and he would drop whatever he was doing, and it was always, always time for his family. He loved his family. He was a, a pocket of clarity bright, innovative, very gentleman-like. He was a sufficiently powerful um, uh, personality with enough good ideas that uh, most of those ideas have lasted uh, until now. Well, Speecher's legacy, I would say, is the, the, the achievement we have, have obtained with the great observatories is, is just unparalleled. What Lyman Spitzos achieved with his dream is comparable to what Galileo has achieved in revolutionizing our understanding of our universe.